Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll talk about a problem from lead code. The problem name is square root function. So you have to implement actually a square root function in which you are given a non-negative integer as an input and you have to compute the square root of that particular number. Now the problem statement also says that return the, like the return touch should be an integer because it should not be like a double. If it has decimal digits, you have to truncate them. Truncate means you have to just ignore them. So you have to find out the closest integer to the particular number that you are given that is the square root of that. So if you are let's say given 4 it is like the square root of 4 is 2 but if you are given let's say 8 the, the square root of 8 is 2.82 something like that but you have to like truncate out the decimal part so it's only 2 so it's only 2 that's returned. So that's the overall problem you can pause this video try to think of it of your own but uh, what you can have done in this problem in such a problems is that what you could have seen is like they got kind of multiple ways to solve out this problem as well. Like you can do an improved force way as well. Like you can just do from one till let's say a very large number, let's say 10 to the power 6. And then for every number, just find out that whether a particular number is the square root of that particular number, like the, whatever number you have. And uh, if it is, then this is return the answer. And that's it. So that also proved pretty well. But if the number is too large, like the number is 10 to the power 18, then that particular method will not work. Okay, but for smaller numbers, it will perfectly work out. But for large numbers, what you could have done is that. So let's say that if you have a number that is equal to, let's say, or let's try to find out the, like the square root of different numbers and just say, what is the number? Like what is the particular pattern you can observe? So you will start, let's say from two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. The square root of two is somewhat close to one point something. So I will just write on one. Now for square root of three is also one point something. I will write on one. Then for two, like four, the square root will become two. Then for this, it will become like two point something. So it's two, then two, then two, then two, and then it becomes three, then three and three and so on. So what you can have seen is that it is like a slowly increasing function. And whenever you see like an increasing function, Whenever increasing functions or decreasing functions you can do and if you find out a specific value you want to find out you can very easily use binary search there and that is one of the tricks I have made a complete series on binary search if you want to learn all of those tricks out uh, you can go out check out this video this video will also be there also only but if you want to check out all other techniques and how to solve different problems in binary search you can check out that particular uh, place I will link that in the description of this video so cool. Now, if you can directly use binary search, like how will you solve like this problem using binary search? So what you can do is that you will say that, okay, the minimum I can get is one. Okay. Like the square root I want to find out, like what is the square root? Okay. The minimum square root I can get is one because I cannot let zero. Okay. Because zero into zero is like something not like value, but like, but let's say that I'll start from one only. And the maximum value is let's say that you can get is let's say X by X. I mean, whatever number that you are given. So, if you want to find out the square root, let's say 15, obviously the value of square root cannot be more than 15. So, which means that the value of square root of 15 lies between one and 15 on a safe note. Like obviously it, it is not 15 as well, but on a safe note, because let's say the answer is one and, and the square root of one is actually one. So it means that the value of that number can be equal to that number as well. So on a safe note, I'll take that the square root of a particular number will be on the range from one till the number itself and thus you can do binary search on that particular range. Now how you can do that? You can just go to the middle of this range. So let's say the range is 15. So I'll just go to the middle of that 15 divided by 2 is equal to 7 like 7.5. So we'll go to 7 and uh, then what you'll do, you'll do. Okay. You're now saying that the square root of 15 is 7. So how you can check it out whether the square root of 15 is 7. So if you know that the square root of 15 is 7. So if I do 7 into 7, it will be equal to 15. Okay. And it is equal to 49, but I'm looking for 15, which actually means that seven gives me a larger square root. Like the, the value that I'm getting is larger and I want to look for a smaller number. So which means that I have to go on the left side. So I will now make my boundary to this point. Now it is like to seven. So obviously the square root now comes down to one and seven. So I will go to the middle of one and seven. So it will become like equal to like four. Now I will like check for four and four. So it will become four into four, which is equal to 16. And 16 is still greater than 15. So it will always be not be equal to four. So I will now go and make my window from one till four. So it will be like between one and four. Uh, so not including four actually. So obviously now I go to the middle. So let's say equal to two. Now two and two, it will become like four. So it will obviously be greater than four because I want to look for 15. So it's greater than four. 
So I'll just move on the right hand side and so on. And this, like you can do binary search with that and that's, that's support your solution. So I'll go down to the code part. Now I've taken the range L and R. So it's like L is one and R is equal to X, like the number you're looking for. Then it is the answer is that whatever answer you're looking for, while L is less than or equal to R, you just find out the middle and whatever middle number you have, if it is equal to X that you're looking for, just return the answer, break out that particular point. Okay. If it is less than a number you're looking for, you will just make your left equal to mid plus one. But before that you will make your answer is equal to mid. So why I'm actually doing this? Because the number that you're looking for can be smaller than the, like the answer can be smaller. So what I'm trying to say here is let's say that, uh, you look for like, you're looking for eight. Okay. You're looking for a number that is equal to the answer will you get to eight. Okay. But the answer for eight is actually two. Okay. So when you got boils down to two, like when you are doing a binary search over this range and it comes down to two, two into two will become equal to four. And thus you already know that you have to go on the right hand side, but the answer is actually two. So what actually means that if you get a smaller number than the number you're looking for, it can be a possible answer. You should not be ignoring that because the, the smaller answer can be always equal to like, it's not actually equal to eight, but the answer is equal to two. So you shouldn't be ignoring that. So whenever I go to a smaller number, like whenever mid into mid is smaller than X, I will make my answer equal to mid, but I will not like, I will not like ignore that number because that can be a particular answer, but I will make my left equal to mid plus one. When I go to a larger side, if I, let's say I want to write, like find out the under root of 15, but I got 16. So that's obviously not the answer. So I'll just make my right equal to mid minus one. And in the end, if I can directly find out a boom answer, boom answer means that perfect answer. Then I just return the particular answer and just break out. But if I cannot, this while loop will actually terminate at any point. And at any point, whenever I stop, whatever my answer will be stored because the smaller answer I will only take. So, and the smaller answer will be stored in answer. And that's the answer actually eventually. And you will learn all of that in the binary search series. Good. So that's the overall logic and code part for this video. Thank you for watching this video till then. I will see you next time. Keep coding and bye.